Hello, this is Lindsay from Have Clothes Will Travel, and today's video is featuring the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust in Nairobi, Kenya. I'll be sharing tips for planning your visit here, as well as how you can help this wonderful charity even if you aren't traveling to Nairobi. The Sheldrick Wildlife Trust is a highly rated wildlife charity in Nairobi, Kenya. They are most known for being one of the most successful elephant orphan rescue and rehabilitation programs in the world. The baby elephants that are in the care of Sheldricks are here for a multitude of reasons. Unfortunately, the most common reason they are orphaned is due to poaching. However, other reasons include drought, starvation, and sickness. The babies here need to be fed every three hours. They actually have a caretaker who sleeps with them at night to wake up and feed them every three hours. I thought it was interesting too that they are being fed human baby formula. This is what they've found to be the healthiest option for the little elephants. Then, once the elephants are old enough, they are released back into the wild. So every elephant you see here will one day be rehabilitated into the wild. Needless to say, the work they do here at Sheldrick Wildlife Trust is incredible, and they do allow the public to visit and see firsthand how they care for the elephants. This is one of my favorite things I did on my entire trip to Kenya, and I highly recommend it to anyone who is visiting Nairobi. There are three different ways you can visit Sheldrick Wildlife Trust in Nairobi and see the baby elephants. The first way, and the most common way, is to visit during their public feeding time. This is every day at 11 a.m. and currently costs 15 USD per adult and 5 USD per child. The public feeding is capped at 100 people per day, and you must book ahead of time with the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. I'll link to the contact information in the video description. Then, when you arrive, you'll pay this donation in cash. You'll get to watch the baby elephants being fed by their caretakers and learn information about the facility in a really fun little presentation. You'll also be quite close to the elephants. They may very well come right up to the rope that's separating you and brush against you. Now, the second way. If you want a little more private of an experience, there is also the option to visit in a small group setting if you've adopted an orphaned elephant. On the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust website, you can adopt an elephant for as little as 50 USD. This money goes towards the care of your adopted elephant, and you'll get updates, photos, and more with your elephant adoption. So if you do this foster parent visit, you'll get the opportunity to meet the elephant you adopted, take photos with them, and watch the same presentation as the public feeding, but in a smaller group setting of about 20. Please note, though, that due to COVID, these foster visits are currently not being held. I'll update the video description once this begins again. And the third way you can visit the Elephant Orphanage is by booking a private visit. Every day at 3 p.m. is reserved for private visitors. This can be arranged for a private group of up to 10 people, and a significant donation is required. Currently, the amount is $1,000 per group of 10. This donation will be made via credit card or cash when you arrive for your private visit. Again, this needs to be booked in advance, and these fill up very quickly. The private visit will get you access to the elephants while they take their mud baths, get fed, and you'll get to interact with them and watch them play. You'll also get to meet their caretakers and ask any questions you have. It's a really special experience. For the purpose of this video, I visited both the public feeding and did a private visit. They are both amazing experiences. If you can afford to make the sizable donation that is required for the private visit, you won't regret it. Getting to be that close to the little elephants is magical. They come right up to you, they'll try to untie your shoes, lean against you. It's so much fun. And of course, your donation is going to a fantastic cause. That being said though, the public feeding is also an incredible experience and it's much more affordable. You still get to be close to the elephants and if they're feeling really social, they'll come right up to you. There's really only a little rope that's separating you from them. So you're still getting to be up close and personal during the public feeding as well. Plus, during the private experience, I was honestly a bit overwhelmed. I mean, in a good way. There's baby elephants running all around, and I couldn't really focus and wasn't really able to take in any of the information that the caretakers were telling me. So going to the public feeding was a much more chill way to learn about the elephants and the work the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust does. I really enjoyed both experiences. And if anyone has any questions about the differences between these visits, I'm happy to answer them in the comments at the end of the video. Other things that I think are worth noting when it comes to planning your visit to the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, you may be wondering if you need to book a tour guide for this visit, and the answer to that is no. You don't need a guide. You can easily book an Uber to take you from your hotel. This is what I did both times I visited. Plus, I highly recommend booking directly with the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. I witnessed one group who had booked and paid through a third-party service, 
which Sheldricks didn't support. So they were not allowed to enter. Book with Sheldricks and pay when you get to the gate. Another option I've seen people do is to hire a private driver for a day around Nairobi. But again, this driver won't actually accompany you into the orphanage. They'll wait in the parking lot until you are done. Also, if you were staying at Giraffe Manor at all during your visit to Nairobi, Giraffe Manor is quite close to the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, and they will arrange transport for you to visit the orphanage during your stay with them. So that's another option to keep in mind, too. I also think it's worth noting that you should wear clothing to Sheldrick's that's either something you don't mind getting stained or something that can be easily washed. I know everything you're going to read about what to wear when you go on a safari in Kenya is going to tell you not to wear black. However, if you have some comfortable black clothing, I would encourage you to wear it when you visit Sheldrick's. This is because the soil here is this orangish clay that will be very difficult to get out of light-colored clothing. This is also something to keep in mind for your shoe choice. Don't wear white sneakers. My husband and I were covered in mud and our shoes were caked by the time we left Sheldrick's after our private visit. During the public visit, we kept our distance, but if you were right next to the elephants, you would have likely have gotten mud on you as well. Bottom line, Visiting the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust is a must-do experience in Nairobi, Kenya. Whether you go to the public feeding or a private visit, this is going to be a magical experience. For me, this was one of my highlights of my time in Kenya. I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about this wonderful charity and helped you plan your visit. If anyone has any questions at all, please feel free to reach out in the comments. And if you're not going to be in Nairobi anytime soon, but would still like to help the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, I'm linking to their Adopt an Orphan program in the description. Again, for as little as 50 USD, you can be the foster parent to an orphaned elephant. You'll get videos and photos of your elephant sent to you and other fun updates. It makes for a really fantastic gift too. Thank you for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, and feel free to subscribe to my channel to get more updates on my time in Kenya.